Hey out there, this is Thursday, May 20th, 2021, and it is just about, uh, about uh, let's see, 7.38 in the morning here in Northern California, and as usual, I'll talk about a few different things today, but uh, you know, like I like to point out at the beginning of every video that I put out, every video series, whatever you want to call it, is that uh, I wouldn't bother doing what I do if I didn't feel like the information I had to give people was both imperative and uh, basically unavailable, okay? That nobody else is talking the way I do. I, I listen to a lot of pundits, a lot of commenters, a lot of educated people, a lot of ignorant people. I listen to people. Okay, all over the mainstream media, I watch the exposés, I watch the crime shows, I watch the court TV shows. I like reality TV for the most part. It, uh, you know, to me, Hollywood is, eh, you know, once in a while I can enjoy a movie, but for the most part, I like to be informed. I like to have knowledge. I like to be. I don't like to be stupid. Basically, that's why I feel like I crave knowing. Okay, I, I like to know stuff. I like to have rhyme and reason. I like stuff to make sense. I like to have order in my mind and in my life, in my world, in my reality. And when I look at this world and the, what, what it, we have developed here over the ages since the beginning of recorded history, and I see where we are at this point, and I wonder, I look around, I, I, I listen to everybody, I listen to the mainstream media, these so-called reporters, these journalists, these reporters of the news that are supposed to give you accurate and important information, which is empowering, and it, it, it removes the stupidity, it removes the darkness, the confusion, is what it's supposed to do. And I see it utterly lacks. And I think, my God, I mean, if you can't step back from this so-called reality that's been shoved down our throats from birth and say, could I make this reality any better? Why are we here? This is, we're, we're, at, we're at the front lines of history right now, this very moment. Okay, do you understand? And I look around, look around yourself and see where we are. Why aren't these so-called journalists, they do these great exposés, and you know, oh, wow, they caught, the, they caught the crooked mechanic, you know, doing something and sabotaging someone's car to make a few bucks. You know, they'll catch the Bernie uh, Madoffs out there maybe once in a while. Uh, you, you get Martha Stewart. She got busted for some insider trading right in the stock market. So we'll hear a few. A few of these, they're like sacrificial lambs. They, okay, here, this is an example. You don't do this. But we know the vast majority of the most crooked people are not being caught. Okay, we call this society, they won't talk about, well, we call it capitalism. They won't talk about, well, it's, it's a hybrid, it's socialism, it's, a, it's an amalgamation. This is something my uh, real estate economics teacher, Thurza Andrews, here in Chico, she taught me about this. And it's, I, it made perfect sense, I already knew it, but just to hear somebody verbalize it, it made sense to me, okay, that, hey, you know what, there's a lot of BS there is a whole lot of BS. The way we're told stuff, the spin they put on stuff is a load of malarkey, okay? It, it really is. It's, it's what's known as propaganda. I mean, we all know there's widespread propaganda. That's like that's a given. But when you just, just ruminate over that term and realize what we're talking about here, we're saying that they're going to mind F you and they're telling you they're mind effing you, yet simultaneously they're telling you to trust in them believe us okay that that somehow it all makes sense when the fact is it doesn't make any sense the direction this country's been going and by extension the rest of the planet is not positive okay this amalgamation of so-called capitalism and socialism isn't working who can say it is what liar what idiot, what fool would say this system is working? 
So let's talk about it. Let's have the conversation. Is this capitalism? Okay, and that term must be defined. How many of these reporters, these so-called journalists out there, yeah, I want to call these people out. What do you know about true capitalism from pseudo-capitalism? What are the identifying factors? What's the litmus test? How do you distinguish capitalism, true capitalism, from pseudo-capitalism? What is the effect of true capitalism versus pseudo-capitalism? What's going on? Why isn't anybody having the conversation? You're 2020. You're 60 minutes. Your morning talk shows. All this crap is useless drivel. Get to the meat of the matter. Why are we expanding poverty in America? Always oh, talk about charity. He's got to build more poor houses. While we, the taxpayers, are forced to spend $50 billion a year to rent poor people houses that can't afford their housing, we're not going to have that conversation. We don't need charities. We're spending $50 billion a year. And why can't we, the people, buy houses? We know. Let's do the math. In the long run, it's going to be one whole hell of a lot cheaper. Any idiot would know that. But we're not going to have that conversation. What, am I too liberal? What, am I too conservative? Tell me. Where's the conversation? Yeah, I'm hamming it up for the, ca the camera. I don't talk to anybody in person like this. But this is my opportunity to get my point out the way I feel inside. It's in my heart. So I'm, I'm sick and tired of it. We the people are done. We're over it. We're cooked. Stop BSing us. You take this UFO issue finally coming out. Oh, now that the government says it's real, it's real. Everybody now it's all oh, real. Uh. Well, is, is this, is, what are these? Are, are these what I talk about? Are these holy angels of God from the Bible? I don't think so. Remember, evil people have high technology they hide from you too. And these other beings, these are probably like critters, offshoots from the original sin, these demons or the serpent, all that crap. Lucifer that rebelled against God was thrown down to earth to harangue humanity. And that's what he's been doing. Got a lot of power, deceived us. It, it got to, it, it, on a genetic basis, we're screwed up because of this demon. Okay, it's a counterfeiter, a faker, but he's got the technology, he's got that power. See, knowledge is power. So they've got these crafts that operate with things like magnetism and anti-gravity or gravity propulsion, however you want to look at it. So what? God's got that and better. The stuff God makes can't be, this stuff can probably be shot down. In fact, some people think that's what happened in the Roswell thing. They've known about this stuff for one whole hell of a long time. It's history. It's in your Bible. Okay, yes, there is other beings. For God's sake, it's a big freaking galaxy. And if you've got crafts, that, you understand, have you ever asked yourself how far Mars is and then calculate how, it, how long they say it takes us, us to get a spaceship there? It's like 120, 30 million miles. I forget how far it is. Look it up for yourself. But yet you go, wait a minute, it only took them how long to get there? And then you start doing the math and you go, well, how in the hell did they go so fast? Because there's no resistance in space. It's a whole different phenomena than we have with gravity. With gravity, not just gravity, the atmosphere. Okay, it's like a fish in water. You take away our atmosphere, we'd be a fish out of water. We're swimming in this stuff. The air, right? We know it's got a lot of compounds that keeps us alive. It's all good. The, uh, what are the carbon dioxide, all that you know, stuff the plants put out that we breathe. And uh, or they put out the oxygen, we breathe it, turn it into carbon dioxide, they use it, and it's all a symbiotic thing. But you understand, we're swimming in this atmosphere. But you take it away, you take away the resistance. It's like the wind resistance you feel in a car or a plane or anything else. There's that draft in the wind resistance because of the gravity. But if you go out of our atmosphere, then there's no resistance. So you, the speed is easy. You can tiny engine and you can propel yourself at vast uh, speeds. 
Uh, so that's how it works. So anyhow, all this stuff is out, and I think, my God, this this is not the important part. This is what this I I think of this as that we're at that point in history where the evil ones are being forced to uncloak. The emperor truly wears no clothes. Okay, it, you can see his naked little shrivel up ding dong. I mean, I'm just meta, they're using a metaphor, but this is who these people are. They're just mean, ruthless, vicious people. They've got a conscience, okay, just like God gave everybody. God doesn't say, oh, well, we're not giving this soul a conscience. No, they just don't value it. It's not relevant to them. It's not pertinent. They're not like you and I who who say, wait a minute, what if it's all true that we are these eternal beings and we do have this thing called a soul and a conscience and we're going to be held accountable someday. So, you know, I don't care so much about being obedient to the laws of man, but I see a higher law, and that is the one, the one that owns me. See, no man gave me life. My dad did very little. He did what monkeys and dogs and cats do, okay? And he, you no know, parents own their children. We have an owner that we're going to be answerable to, we're going to be accountable to, okay? So well, I'm, saying, I'm not saying that you know, the laws of man sometimes aren't right. But sometimes they're not. And then there's a whole void. There's, a, there's this lack of laws where there ought to be laws. I mean, just a simple guideline. Forget law. Let's call it a, a rule, a regulation. Just, you know, be cool and, and follow this. You know, it's like don't litter. Uh, even if you can get away with it, uh, don't do it because it's, it's repulsive. It's, 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 it's obnoxious and don't do it. And that is the golden rule. But this world doesn't operate by the golden rule. It, it's completely fine. Breach it do 180 percent different it doesn't matter it metaphorically speaking you cut throats in your business practices you step on toes you do what it takes you step on heads metaphorically speaking whatever it takes to get ahead to succeed because what's the alternative what's the option by default position what happens if you don't succeed and get ahead no matter who who has to pay the price okay no matter whose throat you got to cut 